Bad Day is me paying tribute to the 60s and 70s uh, cop movies. It's about the Clay Goose's character. She um, is undercover and she comes home one day and she finds her daughter brutally murdered and then she decides to kill everyone that she knows in her job to try and find out who actually pulled the trigger. And then we have two cops played by Antio Febu and Donna Eyre as a sign to bring her home. It's all set in one day and everybody has a really bad day. I think when I first read the script, um, I was really drawn to the character and, and primarily that's really why I take certain roles is because I'm always drawn by either the character or the people that are involved or a director I want to work with. And with this, for me, firstly, it was definitely the character. Um, it was very different to anything I'd done before and I really felt it would give me an opportunity to be seen in a different light. That was sort of the first reason why I was interested in it and got in touch with Ian about it. Um, and then it sort of developed from there and I think also there were a lot of aspects to it, certainly the action and I was really interested in doing all the fighting and because um, it's not really something you get to do every day, run around Soho covered in blood with a gun. So for me it was really something different that um, appealed to me. What was interesting about the script, I actually think it flowed really well and I remember I was reading three or four scripts that week and this was the one that I was most engaged with. Then I think that the thing that, you know, sealed the deal, as it were, was when I met um, Ian, David Diaz, the director, and Anthony Afebu, who plays um, Darius. I think when I met them, we had a coffee, and I think there was just something really raw and real about both of them. And I thought if that kind of grit filters through into the project, for me, it was really appealing. And I thought they were great, and I thought there was just something really alive about the project. And it was quite nice that everybody come together, everybody gave up their time to do something that normally wouldn't really get the chance to get made. I got involved with the film uh, because I've known Ian a long time, since my teenage years, believe it or not, and I worked with Ian on my first film that I ever worked on. Um, we stayed in touch. When he called me about Bad Day, I'd actually taken a year out of the film industry. And he said to me, you know, do you want to get involved in this film? He sent me over the scripts, I read the scripts and I loved it. I felt really passionate about it and quit my very sensible job. <laughs> and the rest is history, I guess. I got involved with Bad Day because I knew Gina. Um, we grew up together and she thought it would be a brilliant opportunity for me to kind of break myself into the acting world because she knew that was something else I was really passionate about doing. Um, and she saw an opportunity for me and a little door to open and um, asked me if I was interested. So I said yes, of course, and then I went down and, and I'd screen tested like everybody else and auditioned for the, for the parts. I got involved with Bad Day because uh, I'd worked with uh, George and um, he suggested, recommended, stroke, twisted my arm, stroke, absolutely beat me up into doing it. And... Um, uh, got a call from Ian and um, I got forced into it and that was it. Ian contacted me probably three or four months before he was due to start filming with the usual kind of phone call. Uh, Dave, Ian Diaz, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Um, we're making a movie. We got no money, not a single penny. Uh, we need you for six weeks. How are you fixed? Um, yeah, go on, why not? So that's pretty much how it went. I got involved with Bad Day probably quite uniquely compared to other people in the sense that I was in Cannes um, uh, with a film I'd done uh, and I bumped into or rather met uh, Ian Diaz. Years passed and uh, he gave me a call out of the blue and said, uh, I'm putting together a little project. Would you like to have a look at the part of Trig? And I said, well, yes, I would. I met Ian uh, about four years ago um, through my stepdaughter, Olivia, who ended up getting the part of Lynn Ryan in Bad Day. Ian was a bit of a fan of Doctor Who. I used to write music for Doctor Who. A few years later, obviously, Bad Day um, was being talked about being made. Ian got in touch and said, would I like to do the music? Um, and would Olivia like to play this part of Lynn? And we both said yes, and basically that's how we got involved. Hello, hello. I got involved with the film because I'd worked with Ian on a short film before Bad Day and he'd remembered me and we kind of kept in contact and he rang up one day and said, would I like to be a part of it? And I said yes. 
Ian came to me one day with an explosive idea. He said, hey, we want to make this movie, and it's all going to be handheld, and uh, it's going to be a cop movie, and it's a, a homage to the 60s and 70s uh, uh, genre of cop movies. I knew Ian from uh, many years ago uh, when we did a film called The Killing Zone, which we shot in 16 mil. Uh, must be a good eight or ten years ago, and we've sort of kept in touch since then. And I've worked on a lot of his other projects, both as a, a cameraman and also doing a bit of additional writing and uh, script polishing. Bad Day came out of a conversation we had a couple of years ago. We were thinking, uh, basically, how cheaply could you make a film, by necessity, of course, and uh, how to make it look different. And uh, we came up with this idea of doing something like uh, Narc, which is a film we'd just seen in those days. And uh, it was basically a lot of handheld work, keep it very natural looking, try not to play with the lighting too much, because that always costs more money and uh, it kind of uh, had its genesis from that, that sort of lunchtime discussion. I got involved in Bad Day in a roundabout way. My girlfriend was the production manager on the film, and she'd come home every day tired with a script which had a lot of green screen in it, and I kept asking her how she would ever get this all done, and she didn't know, so one day I just turned up to one of the meetings. Ian had no idea who I was until I said, I'm going to do all your green screens for you, at which point he was very, very happy. The most obvious ones are all of the car shots. So we ended up going for a style of back projection, homage to the old films, which made it a little bit simpler. There were over 250 shots like that, and ordinarily each shot would take about a week to do, but I had three weeks in order to do all of them. Working with Ian's actually quite good, and the fact that he's my friend makes makes things easier in terms of addressing certain issues as opposed to addressing, uh, approaching them on a professional level. You know, you get more of a, a clear answer out of him. You know, we can debate things a lot easier than we, I would normally with another director. Plus, he's got a great deal of confidence in us, which is good. It makes life a lot easier, I must admit. But it does have its restrictions and drawbacks. I don't want to work with Cummings anymore. I just can't do it, sir. David Cummings? Really? Well, well, Donna um, started off as an actress anyway, um, but she's, she's more known for her presenting work on MTV. The thing that convinced me about Donna was that she, when she came into the audition, we gave her the sides and she learnt the sides word by word. So she knew everything that was on the sides. So she didn't have to refer to the sides when she was doing her audition. And that alone convinced me that well, she was really serious about getting the role. But when she did that in the auditions, that really impressed me. So that's why I decided to take on Donna. And um, working with Donna, it was it was a great experience. I teased her a lot. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that's going to take time on the day, isn't it? I never thought that. I'm so glad you're here. Donna. Oh, did that, could that be right just for once? Let us move on. I think she's a really good actress, personally. And uh, she's amazing to work with, and I love working with her, and I want to work with her again. So. Working with Ian. Um, Ian's brilliant. I think Ian's funny. He thinks he's all big and scary, but he's not at all, actually. Well, he doesn't scare me. <laughs> um, basically, you're both there at the end of the day to get the job done, to get it done as efficiently as possible and to get the best possible results. So I think, you know, there's a definitely an underlying respect because I like somebody that wants that too. And, you know, I think that unites you. And I think he's great. I think he's been so passionate about this project and he's worked harder than anybody. And I think that definitely deserves credit. What are we going to talk about? Or the people I've killed today? Or why my baby was taken away from me, an innocent, beautiful little girl who never did anyone any harm? Working with Claire Goose, for me, was really, really good. She's so professional. She's an incredibly focused person, and she's an amazing actor. As a, as a director and writer, you, you can write a scene and create a scene, but it's the actor that has to perform within that moment as the camera turns. And Claire had what it takes to perform just at the exact point when the camera turns. She's amazing. I loved working with her. Oh! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> right, so, back. Oh. so Claire, uh, when you do come in with gun, you want to be, you want to be limpy. Which leg does she break? Oh, or, or well, she goes that for that leg, leg, isn't she? Although yeah. I limped out on that one. What, when you come into the car? No, you know the thing we did today? That is going to happen. Well, no, I was kind of doing both, really. Ah, she's not perfect after all. <laughs> Ian was great, and I, I think what I think really helped was the fact that Ian actually wrote it. It was a really quick reference that you could just go to Ian and go, what did you mean when you wrote this, or, or how did you see this happening, or, or where are they coming from, because I don't quite know how to pitch this or whatever. So. Um, you know, I think a lot of responsibility was on Ian in that sense because he was kind of the source of all this information and everyone sort of had to go to him. Well, what about the neighbours? Anthony is 
a terrific actor and he's a great presence, wonderful presence. And in some ways, I put him center stage in this movie. He wanted to do it, but he was a bit unsure because basically, because Anthony's a comedian, he can, he can make anyone laugh. So to play Darius, which is not like him at all, he was kind of slightly worried. So I said to Anthony, watch all these films, watch um, Last Boy Scout, watch, uh, you know, Clint Eastwood and Cop movies, watch, uh, watch Seven, Somerset. And he kind of nodded, but he didn't watch any of the movies. So he really didn't understand, but that's OK anyway, because I had to sort of like push him in. I actually think he saw Seven. So. Working with Ian as a friend, uh, as a director, well, he was just that, uh, uh, a hardcore director. I mean, Ian wants to get things right, and, and that's great. Um, it didn't go without its problems. We, you know, we argued, we fought. Like cat and dog, but I think that's uh, over the years that's been part and parcel of our relationship, and, uh, and so that's that. Ian plays the role of a director. He's a very sharp director. He knows what he wants, uh, what he says he wants. He tries to get. Actually, and you're rubbish, by the way. At least he's consistent. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Working with Ian was kind of like a last-minute dot-com thing. I was kind of thrown in at the deep end. Um, not sure why. But um, maybe I was busy why they didn't ask me to do it before. That's the way I think about it. But um, it was good. He knew what he wanted. And um, hopefully he got what he wanted out of all of us. Wrong door, dickhead. Do I look like I ordered a fucking pizza? <laughs> Obviously, when I hired Gina to, to make the movie, Gina suggested Sarah um, to be part of the movie. You know, if we got Sarah, it'd work because Sarah's so famous. She's in Girls Aloud. So hopefully it will bring attention to our movie. So. And, and she was good. She wants to be an actress, and she, I thought she was really good. No, working with Ian's really good. It was really nice of him to give me an opportunity to kind of do this, really. And um, he's, he's definitely hard, hard working, very hard working, very passionate for his art, and he really pushed me to my limit. But <laughs> it's not a bad thing. It really, he helped bring out the best. And um, I'm sure that he would have cut the scene if he didn't think I was worthy of it. So, you know, I, I really like what he brought out in me, and I appreciate that. Hey, Jack! Uh, 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 When you make a low-budget movie, it is really important to have rehearsals. Really, really important, because it saves time on set. When you're dealing with actors that you don't know what kind of level they're going to give you, then you have to work at them and, and make sure that they're all right on the day. You, you do all the rehearsals, you get everything out of your system, and when you're on a set, it's merely a formality. You just shoot it and you move out. Look at you. You want to see the day out of the shape you're in. Your nose is running like a tap. No, stop! It'll be all right! Yeah, all right. <laughs> Something's wrong with this picture. And why would Rebecca draw down on me? I think I may have underestimated this situation. Oh, shit! When I catch up with her, I'm gonna kick the living crap out of her! Listen to me. <gasps> We're only meant to find her and bring her in, so stay focused. It's easy for you to say you're not the one she just kicked the shit out of! Fuck off! Donna Air, Donna's fantastic. Working with Donna Air is like a breath of fresh air. She's, uh... She's very dedicated in what she does. Um, she really wanted to learn. I mean, we, we did lots of rehearsals before the start of the film. We did some stuff on camera, and, uh, and Donna was wanted to try all sorts of things. You know, so she's very keen. She's, uh, you know, tries to be very creative. And it, it, was a, it, was a, it was a joy, because she's just positive. Yeah, Donna was really nice to work with. The thing with Donna, she thought a lot about the Abby character and a lot about the relationship with, with, with my character, Cummings, which, which was nice because it would have been easier to, for her to think, well, this film is, is Abby's journey and Abby's story and you're just, you know, you're just a supporting character, but she didn't treat it like that. So, yeah, we worked pretty closely. Again, Ian really pushed Donna, um, but she didn't, she didn't break, she didn't crumble, she took it all on board and, and, and well, I'm, I think if you see the film, it's evident that... Uh, in her performance uh, of, of how great that she actually did with the whole thing. I know Anthony through theatre, so I've, I've been, you know, we've been together for years, so to speak, but um, I, thought it was, I thought it was great. I thought, you know, I think you could have smoked a bit more in it, but, you know, the scenes that I'd done with Donna, very, very good, very straightforward, you know what I mean? I was just, you know, reprimanding her, but um, she was cool. She um, held her own, helped me out, actually. I have to thank you, Donna. 
She knows what I'm talking about. We're all done here, boys. It's OK. Why don't you get lost? You sure? Partner don't look fit for shit. Cummins, get lost. Hey, hey. Uh-oh. Looks like someone's riding the PMS pony. Abby, it's just a prick. It's not worth it. Walk away. Yeah, Abby. You heard him. Walk away. Do what the boss says. You wouldn't want to get your ass kicked all over again now, would you? Think about what it might do to our baby. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah, oh, ah, You're laughing at me! Ah, shit. You're laughing ah, at me, you bastard! Ah, 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 Abby, get in the car. The rehearsal process was... It was hard. It was definitely very hard because it was learning quite a lot of dialogue and um, I haven't done that for years. I trained when I was younger. What was the hardest thing for me was I was... My first scene was being on the phone, pretending there was someone else on the other, uh, other side, reacting to no-one. You know, having that conversation, having an argument with myself, basically. And I had three pages of dialogue to learn, so I found that quite hard. But Ian was really good at pushing me and scaring me into learning the lines, so... <laughs> OK, OK, Billy, I'm moving as fast as I can. Look, if you decided to leave with me like this morning, like we were supposed to, I'm <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Ian, Ian, yeah, he, he was brilliant. He was great. He really pushed me, but in a way, I need that. You know, it's constructive criticism, and I do appreciate that. I do need to be pushed sometimes to bring out the best side of me. And um, he definitely did that. And, uh, yeah, he put pressure on for me to learn my lines, because when we rehearsed a few times, I'd be like, shit, shit, I can't remember that. Right, well, you can't be going into your scene. You haven't got enough time. You need to learn your lines. <laughs> so I was like, shit, I don't want to let him down. It's my first scene. <laughs> so I really set out to, you know, try and do the best of the job that I could and throw myself into it completely. I was in the middle of doing a lot of um, promo work with Girls Aloud as well, so it was, you know, I was juggling a few things at the same time, but it's better than not being busy, eh? I think the rehearsal process definitely helped in, in many aspects. For, for the start, I think, you know, when you come together with a group of actors that you've never worked with before, it does take a few days to be able to feel sort of safe and to trust them and to be able to just relax and, and sort of go with it. So the rehearsal process, I think definitely benefited from that, but also the nature of this particular shoot was going to be so fast that we knew when it came to actually shooting it, there wouldn't be the time to sit there and go, oh, what does my character feel at this point? So all of that sort of process was talked about, discussed and sort of fleshed out in the rehearsal process, even down to blocking certain scenes we sort of knew pretty much exactly where we were going to be and then when we were in the space we could just replicate what we'd already done in rehearsal. So I think it saved an awful lot of time and it just, I think, moved all of us on a different level. So actually when we came to shoot, we were very much ready to start. good thing with Ian is that, whether he's your mate or not, what he, what he cares about more than anything is the final product and he's passionate about telling the story. And Ian will push you really hard. If he doesn't like what you're doing, he'll tell you straight. What was interesting about that process, actually, with the rehearsals, was if you're too theatrical, you know, that can come across and look completely fake on screen. But sometimes, when you're holding it in, although it feels like you're given a lot, you might not be given too much. So it was really about that balance. And there were, there were points where I thought uh, I was really going for it and really giving it stuff, and, and Ian would say, no, 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 you're nowhere near, I want more, I'm not convinced, I want to see more. And then there were other areas where he was bringing in timber and starting to build us a stage and tossing flowers at us because it was, you know, too theatrical. We were very lucky to get the time to rehearse purely because the shoot for a feature film was so short. Um, so on the day we knew exactly what we were doing, so it'd be, on, do it, right, let's go. Moving on, um, which is great, you know, it's quite good and it keeps you on your toes. And, yeah, you do make certain discoveries in rehearsals as well as on the day, in the moment. It's quite nice when things you haven't really thought about because a lot of things you don't need to think about, they should just happen if everything's working. Yeah, he, he was very helpful. Um, and, you yeah, know, he works quickly, which is good. Uh, it can be scary at times, but it is it is it is good, and it's it, that process will only let you down if you haven't done your homework. I find often uh, there should be that healthy respect, I think, from director to actor and, and actor to dire to director, and, and I think we had that. I 
Sam yeah, Charles. this is my friends, make aggressively beautiful. Yeah, we got Marley. Greetings, my name is Dominic Tobias. I'm gonna be playing a character called. Uh, <laughs> no, character. Yeah, this now, if we're doing a lot of outside stuff, is it worth me having something else on? Under this, yeah, because aren't I going to be cold all day outside filming? Ah, something you're at. We've got very limited options. That's the only... He'll know what he wants. He normally has got an opinion. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah, cool. yeah. I'm just going to imagine what he wants now. He likes lots of hair. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think he <it> looks good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Today's a bad day. Today is actually a bad hair day for him. We had um, a great uh, stunt coordinator, Dave. We used to call Safety Dave, because he also used to tell us um, the safety aspects of each fight sequence before we started. And um, he was brilliant. He was incredibly enthusiastic and incredibly patient with myself and with Donna and um, Rihanna, because, I mean, I don't think any of us had really done fight sequences like that. And he was really conscious that it's so easy to injure yourself or someone else if, if you're just not focused or concentrating. And um, so he would take it very, very slowly and we would literally build it like blocks and just keep redoing it, almost like a dance. You just keep rehearsing each bit and then add a little bit on to that. But what was interesting, I think, in the time that we were rehearsing the stunts is we sort of worked out where our capabilities were and how far we could push ourselves. And if a certain kick didn't look right, then we didn't keep it in because we particularly wanted that kick. It was very much what we were able to do. Sorry, we'll cheat you back on the day. There you go, I'm a great believer that a fight is not just about the, the physical movements. Um, it, it's very much a, a, an, an aspect of drama, which means not only are we rehearsing the, the actual fight manoeuvres, we, we're getting our actresses to probably be in their, one of their most emotional, emotional states. Um, there's that element to consider with, and it's all part and parcel of getting the final product. Um, and this is not something that can, you know, literally happen overnight. The um, rehearsals for even the shortest of fights has got to take a, a lot of time, unless you're working for TV, and then you get a TV-looking fight. But something that is a movie that, you know, that, you know we're all going to be proud of, you've got to put the time in, and we, we did put an awful lot of time in on those fights. I really enjoyed um, the physical side and the fight scenes. Um, it's something I would definitely like to do more of because it's, there's another layer, there's another challenge. So, you know, you do what you do on set. But for me, it gave it a, another dynamic. And in stuff I've done in the past, I've never really had the chance to do that. So I really enjoyed it and I would definitely like to explore that bit more. A lot of people don't always realise how much actually goes into it. And particularly on the fight scenes, you know, there was a lot of rehearsals. We had great fun. I mean, Claire is such a, such a wonderful person and we had good laughs. There's a bit in the fighting sequence where I get punched in the boob. <laughs> For a woman, <laughs> that doesn't happen every day. And uh, yeah, I think probably that would stay with me for a while. I mean, there were times where it was quite tough and we'd rehearse it and, and you'd think, well, you know, am I going to remember all of this? Is it going to look right? And, you know, you do panic a bit. But for the most part, it was it was good to, to film and it was great to perform it. So, yeah, it was, it was good. <laughs> a lot of running but fortunately I run quite a lot anyway so um one at a time 
so the rare. <laughs> well, it's kind of ironic that I'm probably physically fit now than when I actually did the movie, because running was never my favourite method of exercising, although maybe it's opened something, because now I'm really enjoying running, I don't know why. So maybe doing bad day triggered something about running, I don't know. But, you know, I'm partial to a bit of a jog around the park now. That's not bad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I really enjoyed all of that um, aspect of it. Again, that was something that really appealed to me in the film. I really loved the physicality of the character and that there was a lot of running. And we spent many days running in Battersea Park, as I recall. Um, but, yeah, it was great fun. Most of the leads being females, Ian said before, um, you know, you don't really see that a lot, and especially in the British films, all the bad guys are always men, so it was quite interesting to change that dynamic, and I think it worked really well. Uh, another hard day, another few more pulled muscles, two very tired girls, but still very enthusiastic, I think. Uh, again, it's been slow today, but, you know, you've got these things to do. We think we've battled on uh, another fight scene that we, uh, we feel is coming together now. I'd love to have another two days at it. We ain't got that, but I guess we just need to see how it all goes from here. How do we manage to shoot the film so quickly? Um, if you've got a good DOP and a good cameraman and a good director, anything else below that triangle, in theory, can be at different levels of experience. But as long as you've got an experienced triangle, which is the DOP, the cameraman and the director, as long as those people are at the top to helm the production, I don't think you can fail unless you know, something really bad happens. The shooting format was, as usual, dictated by the amount of budget we didn't have. So we ended up shooting on the uh, HVX200, which is a P2-based camera. Rather than using the little P2 cards, which uh, found a little bit limiting as to how much they could record, we ended up using a hard drive combination with that. So we could record up to, uh, I think it was 100 minutes. And uh, once again, that played into this ethos of doing it handheld. We knew we were going to be shooting in some very small, tight, cramped locations, car interiors, that sort of thing, and a small camera camera plays into that a lot easier. We decided to um, shoot the film handheld because we had very little money. So if you had to set up on sticks or if you, if you had steady cam, that all takes time to set up. So we thought that we'll shoot handheld because it's faster to do it that way. But also, it lended its way to the tone of the movie, so that's why we went for handheld. <laughs> right. The word blow. Oh, so, so if you can take your gun out and point it at her. Not tonight, so Josephine. Thing. You see that? <laughs> Howard, our wonderful police officer, has agreed to do stuff that is not meant to be done. Like what? Well, like he said he'll do, he'll come in and stand in as a, as a stand-in copper. Yeah. And uh, there's meant to be a lot of protocol to, uh, you know... So he agreed sort of to do that for you, he agreed, but he, he says, yeah, says, I don't care. Me. Well, you know... You gotta have a way, huh? <laughs> gotta guess the flair. You gotta. Oop! Rebecca and Harry's relationship, you sort of pick up quite far down in, in their relationship. You can see that she sort of changed him. They're both coming from very different worlds, and yet there's something that really connects them. And I think if things had turned out differently, they probably would have, you know, stayed together and, and made a go of it. When she's Margaret, she's very much Margaret. And when she's Rebecca, she's Rebecca. She kind of... She's a bit schizo like that. <laughs> uh, my character's called Harry McCann and he's a fucking lunatic. He's lived a life of crime, he's now got out of it, he's into running cabs and, you know, a little bit of dodginess, but doesn't really want to be. Still kind of wants to poke his sister, but he's not sure you know, she's been in jail for a, for a while, so. Then he gets this new girl, and, uh, and he quite kind of likes her. I think it's the first hanky-panky that he hasn't had with, with the big sis. I, I'm not scared to tell people off. I think I told Anthony off. A couple of times on the set. Out. 
Everything was going wrong. I thought we were going to come in and fight with Ian. Seriously. Seriously, have a big fucking round with Ian. Everybody's busting a gut. I mean, everybody is busting a gut. Uh, I've burnt bridges left, right, and centre on this. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Andrews, you stupid. The wonderful thing is, when you suspect the worst is going to happen, yeah. somehow it just transforms and it's not as bad as you think it is. And it's, uh, it's, almost, uh, it's almost more beautiful that it happens that way. You stupid. No, nope, that's it. I've got it. I just needed to. No, Andy, you can No, I needed to just do that. I've got right. it. If yeah. he gets it wrong, everybody beats the crap out of him, all right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> Mum. You're shouting at me again. I actually thought today I was going to give this whole fucking shenanigans up. Goddamn actors. I know exactly what I'm saying. Do you know how much time we'll wait? We'll wait, waiting for a fucking audience. <laughs> audience? So that's my honesty for today. Yeah, fuck off. Yes, I remember that. You're stunned. You're angry, right? In that order, okay? Sometimes if you forget what I'm saying, then you start to get in the take and then we're, we're lost. So you have to remember it, yeah? The thing I liked about the Abby character, there was something very endearing about her in the sense that, you know, she is naive and she is very green and... I quite like that vulnerability and the fact that she makes a lot of mistakes. And I think the rewarding thing will be to see the character come out of that and she ends at a very different place. You know, that one day and that experience, she's a very different person. And I think that's really nice because that can happen, it does happen in life. We'll get that. Probably the reverse for that one. We'll shoot that one. She got, she got pat in there. Just sort of coccyx, just in okay. case we come down hard on the floor. Does she want an elbow? Yeah, it's okay, boy. I'm worried. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Will I get through that cardboard, though? Yeah, it's only cardboard. Yeah, yeah, I will hit the mattress, but I am small. I might not, my weight might not get it through. Well, it's just it's just it's just going just like, going to break the angle, shoot flat on with the wall. She's going to get it wrong with the first take, isn't she? She's going to get it wrong. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Not when you've only got it one take. Slow 68, take two. Okay, stand by. Stand by. And. Action! Yeah. <laughs> you know what, right? We should take it. Should we not take it with the mattress before she pushes the mattress off her? Why yeah. should we stop? We should just. Because we didn't want you to get it was funny. the mattress. Because it was funny. We were worried about you. I think I'll okay. with a mattress. If you lie where you were, where you fell. All right, so shall so we take it from there, Cliff? And then go. <laughs> and just yeah. Go. I don't know. I don't know. We filmed in Bassey Park. They were all really good. I mean, obviously, the council has to be involved and the police, especially when using firearms, and everyone was really helpful, understood, obviously, we were on a low budget and tried to help us out as much as possible. So we were really, really lucky, actually. It was my responsibility, ultimately. We had location managers and stuff, and they were very good, but um, some of the locations were very hard work and took quite a lot of convincing. Forward, forward, forward. A bit further forward. You're a bit further forward. Why are you? <laughs> I haven't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, oh, no, it's a good idea. Everybody thinks they're a Georgie all of a sudden. We did have trouble with one of the locations and we did in fact evacuate it quite quickly. Um electrician came round, had a lot, decided to call up people, tell them what we're doing here. And uh it's just like oh man. This just makes you angry like when people have got nothing else in their lives and therefore they have to try and do something to wreck other people's enjoyment. You've got everyone here who's working for free, they've been working so hard. And one guy comes and opens his right, Anything that um, is unneeded around here, tidy it away, because these people have got to think this is like a tiny little student production that come around. That's what I've heard, so that means all the lights have to come down and stuff like that as well? No, no, just anything lying around, like bags and stuff, just put it all into one corner and make it all like... Minimalistic. Minimalistic. No, 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 no. Just get rid of signs. Well, we fucked. 
No, we're not really fucked. <laughs> well, we are really, to be honest. <laughs> we're not really fucked, it's just that... Um, just a minus... Setback. Yeah, yeah, some people like to, as Dan says, like to put their big nose where it doesn't belong. And um, just try and kind of, like, stop people from being creative. That's what it's all about. The guy that we'd rented it from didn't tell us that he hadn't informed the people that actually owned it. You know, we were under the impression that everything could been, you know, gone through fine. And the owners turned up one day and we all had to um, scarper quite quickly for a few hours. But Ian actually carried on shooting the scene. So I just carried on shooting because we were shooting in the basement. So I just carried on shooting. And I think they came and they saw us shooting that scene and then they weren't really too bothered, so it was fine. So, so how, how long was I last stay in the pub? Um, the, the, well, this is the story. We're at the pub for uh, probably two, three hours tops. Reason being we had to bug out of the building because um, we're not supposed to be filming here. Um, which, uh, if you've ever seen a film crew pack up and leave a building in 10 minutes, you should have been here today. Yeah, I think we're going well today. We've picked up where we left off, back on schedule. It's just about 10 o'clock, so it's been another 12 hour day plus. So, spirits are still high. That will be the same again tomorrow, you can guarantee it. Isn't that Marshall? That's right. Basically, Darius Cruz's character kind of falls into our tribute to the, um, the 60s and 70s cop movies because in those kind of movies, there's always certain things like the screaming black boss. You know, Donna was cast because she's good looking and she, you know, played, obviously played the good looking rookie, the grizzled cop, that's where Darius comes in. And Anthony played him very well as, a, as the grizzled cop. So if you look at cop movies, you have certain occurrences in cop movies, like for instance, the saying, I think it all started off with Clint Eastwood saying, um, um, do you feel lucky punk? And then other cop movies started copying it, like, like Lethal Weapon, you know, I'm old, too old for this shit. And we got Darius saying, oh, same shit, different day. So we were just trying to pay tribute to that. And that's his character, basically. You've seen it so many times. That character is Darius. The relationship between Darius and Abby starts off with much difficulty because Darius is, is a lone wolf in his job. He doesn't like working with anyone. And he's particularly uh, ha has been chaperoning uh, another member of his team who's undercover. And uh, he doesn't want to break that pattern for security reasons, for his own reasons, security to his own life, et cetera, et cetera. And then he's twinned with this young upstart, Abby Barrett. And uh, he's not happy about that at all. I think the Abby and the Darius relationship is a lovely relationship. I think it's a very genuine and very organic relationship in a sense. I think they're both at a place where they're, you know, a little bit cynical. Abby's is probably more superficial. She's got all this emotional stuff going on with the pregnancy and Cummings and all of this male ego that's kind of beaten her down to a certain extent and certainly intimidating her. And so I think that's why she's in this place of, you know, guarded and uh, won't let anybody in. And she's a bit like a, you know, kind of wounded animal at some points. They both don't want to let another person in at all right now and then just from being together they eventually do because I think what they have in common is they both definitely fall on the side of good. I'm not the bad guy. <laughs> I'm not even the bad guy though, that's the thing. Yeah. Trigg is essentially somebody who does bad things occasionally but uh, I would venture not without conscience for one and secondly in the context of the film he doesn't really do anything bad, he's supportive and honourable to his relationship with Rebecca slash Margaret. Benjamin Radcliffe was kind of like um, Captain Doby in Starsky and Hutch, but without the Krispy Kreme donuts and the um, ice cream. He was just a no-nonsense kind of guy, really. Um, been in the force for years, been there, seen it, done it, got the T-shirt, everything, written the book. He would like to have had time with, with, you know, the likes of some of the people in his task force, but he just didn't really, so it was one of those where, you know what, if you're hard enough, you can cope with it on your own, but if you're not, then sorry, see you later, bye. My character, the character of Cummings, essentially, you know, it's a supporting character, and the character of Cummings is really there to service the Abby character. No pun intended. No, what, what I mean is it's to, it's to service Abby's journey, really. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, there were some layers to that character as well. Yes, he's, he's a cop, but he's also in bed with the McCann. So, you know, there, there was some interesting stuff to play there as far as that's, that's concerned. How do you think the fight's gonna go? Slowly. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of modern fight stuff like, you know, see Batman Returns. 
begins. Begins. South begins. begins. South, same. Begins. Begins. Uh, you did. Yeah, it's very energetic, and the fight sequences are quite well done. But you, you just can't, can't see. see what, you can't see what's going on. And that's the trouble. So you get all that frenetic action. But it's like, I just want to see one good solid fucking punch land, please. <laughs> so hopefully, hopefully find a nice middle ground there, something with a lot of energy, but you can actually see it's, you know, Donna and Claire beat the shit out of each other. Claire and Donna, they were just so full of enthusiasm. It almost got quite competitive. Um, in fact, they each had their own teams of supporters. Even though the fight was scripted, they were still, you know, is it going to go one way or the other? And that kind of made it fun. So for the big fights tonight, who do you reckon is going to win? Well, I think Donna's <laughs> going to get pissed off and come back at the yeah, end. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> going to go with Donna, actually, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, I'm actually going to back Donna. You're going to back Donna? Back yeah, Donna. I'm going to back Donna. I know I'm making a go Claire sign, but... It's only because the director tells me to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you, Alan? Um, who do you reckon you're going to be your money on? Either Claire or Don? Uh, well, it's going to be close. Gotta be, gotta be Claire. Got to be Claire. Yeah. Why do you say that? Well, yeah, she's a bit more compact, you see. So low centre of gravity, high power to weight ratio. <laughs> Working with Donna and Sarah was brilliant, actually. I think both of them were fantastic. Donna had so much energy and an enthusiasm. I really took my hat off to her, and she was the one who kept going, right, come on, let's do it again, let's do it again. And this was like after eight hours of doing a fight sequence when you're just on the floor. Working with Claire was really good fun. Um, she's very serious about her job, very passionate. I felt like a real loud mouth next to her, though, because she's such a natural at what she does. She um, comes across like it's just... just she just oozes the character that she's playing. It she doesn't even. It looks like she doesn't even need to try. Working with Claire was so so good. She was kind of the highest profile actress I've ever worked with, and um, I learned a lot from her because she's so natural. Really, there was one scene where um, she had to cry just instantly over my dead body, and she just did it. There was absolutely nothing beforehand. She just cried. I really enjoyed working with Claire. I would say, without any arrogance, she has a great faith in her ability. She understands the job and she does the job and does it very well, I think. Sound. Action. Let's have a look one more time. Let's now. Let's have a look one more time. You're going to rotate this way. Yeah. Just for the moment. Which way are you going? <laughs> <laughs> Through again. <laughs> OK, let's set it up then. Yeah? OK, stand by, don't hit the rocker reel, and action! <laughs> you broke my nose just then. Working on television to this film was very different. I think just because of the constraints they had budget-wise on this, they were very, very long days um, and really, you know, really hard. But I think the bonuses of that were you knew everyone was there because they wanted to be there. No one was there because they were getting paid lots of money. <laughs> so you did get a sense of that on set that, you know, everyone felt very strongly about this film and were there because they wanted to be there and to sort of make it the best that they possibly could. And um, I think from that, you know, really great things can happen. And cut. Back table three, take three. Today we are doing uh, scribs and blood on the floor because we can't put the blood on the actual floor. So we put CG blood on the floor. And uh, we're shooting lots of people, killing off all the characters near the end of the film. It's all good. One, two, three, bang. Everybody's there because we all want to do this project. And it was really sweet. I remember one night, actually, it really hit home. It was about 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning, and everybody's, you know, freezing cold, you know, pretty rough circumstances. You know, everybody's doubling up. Everybody's kind of there in the middle of the night. We don't really have to be, but we all want to be. And I actually looked around and I thought it's a very sweet moment because everybody on this set is just here to make a little piece of work that we can all, you know, be proud of. Mm. 
fact that these are hard plastic really? helps spread the law. When you finally leave bad day, what will, what will be my lasting memory? Yeah, basically. Blood. <laughs> it will be a lot of blood um, and a lot of fighting. It's been a very bloody show with a high body count. Ready? Roll. <laughs> Action. <laughs> so sorry. Oh, fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, just keep rolling. I don't know what I've, hang on, I'm feeling um, weird with the screen because we didn't do it or rehearse it. I'm just trying to work out what it is. Cut. Can you read it, what it says? Um, Abby's screaming. Okay, just go bang, bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so just give us one bang to the gun. Ready? And action. Right, just hold there for a second and slowly look at her. The style of music from the film, Ian really wanted to um, go for a kind of a very dark, um, almost like a horror film score for it. So I listened to an awful lot of film soundtracks that kind of were either in the horror genre or kind of the darker end of suspense murder films, and we kind of went along those lines. Um, but obviously there's also a very human element to the film as well, so I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just pure darkness, that there was a sort of emotional quality to the music as well. It was really an idea of combining those two sort of sound uh, elements together and creating the score. Right, cue! That was too late now. <laughs> you got the wrong door, dickhead. I didn't know what I fucking think of that. All the way around like that. <laughs> hey, sweetie. I hear you've been bad, man. Are you want to I swear, whenever you fucking touch me. I didn't really need to develop Jade that much because she's quite similar in personality. The only thing I felt like I needed to develop um, was maybe the way she looked because I didn't want people seeing me as Sarah Harding. I did suggest wearing a wig. That was my idea. Christ, Marla, who set a fire to your tampon? I wanted them to see me in, in a different light as Jay Jennings, you know, the, the gangster mole kind of... You know, just a, a cocky, loudmouth. Well, I'm quite cocky and quite loudmouthed anyway, but just a different kind of take on things for me I thought was important for this part to be taken maybe slightly seriously. Sarah decided to wear a wig, I think, because she wanted to get away from the pop star image and she was doing something very, very different, so she wanted to physically look different. And I suppose for an actor, maybe it's easier to get into character if you look different, so, you know, maybe the, the wig was a tool for her as well. It was her choice, really, and she really wanted to wear the wig, so... Who am I to say no? Wigs work and wigs don't. And uh, the, the, the scene with uh, her and Rihanna in the hotel room where she's getting strangled, perfect example, you know. Rihanna's wig's great, played into her character. Sarah's wig, not such a good call. Yeah, I know, I know. Never ever getting a synthetic wig ever again. From the start, I saw Marla as someone with dark hair. For me to perform Marla's character, it did do a lot to actually have that particular image because once you've got the image in your head, um, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you see it, 
you know, it does give you that extra bit that you need to to perform. It was hard at first, actually, because it was there's a lot of hair, and it took a bit of adjusting because you kind of saw dark shadows all around you. But once you get used to it, it was, it was good. Speed, action. Hey, sweetie. I hear you've been bad mouthing me all over town. Swear to God, if either of you thinks about touching one hair on my head. <laughs> Sarah was great. You know, what was nice about it was, you know, the fact that she was quite modest and she did say, you know, I'm nervous or, you know, I'm not sure. And do you think it was OK? And I guess it was nice to know that she, she did ask me for some help and advice and it was great you know she's a really she's a great girl I, I was very impressed with Frank who plays Chopper he was I love Frank he's such a character in, his, in himself and the way he just sits there eating the pizza while I'm having the living daylights kicked out of me by Marla um, and he didn't want to leave his pizza no I did think he's just he's just great <laughs> wrong door dickhead I didn't order a pizza <laughs> Also, I really like Rihanna. I worked with her. She was kicking the shit out of me in the one scene, and I'm spitting blood out on her and swearing at her, and the next thing, and she's trying to strangle me, and the next thing, it's like, cut, right, we're laughing. So we had a real laugh together, me and Rihanna, doing those scenes. So as serious and as violent as it looked, if, if in between it, we were laughing our heads off. It was great fun. You've got to spit it out. There she comes. <laughs> well, let's get ready, people. <laughs> I think Sarah did a great job and I think she has a lot of potential and um, if she keeps going with it, she'll do really, really well. This for me was kind of a, a good challenge. I didn't want to come into something. I didn't want to do too much, but then I didn't want to do too little. So for me, this was the perfect role and a perfect challenge to kind of see what I was capable of and to sort of push those boundaries slightly and take me away from being the, uh, the bad gal in Girls Allowed to be in the bad girl on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> in bad day. <laughs>is a bad day sequel yeah and i'd be a lot better at the running this time <laughs> well i don't know whether they could get me in it depending on um the ending unless they go back in a different way maybe it's before if there was a sequel to bad day i think i would want to be in it um I think there's uh, still a lot of mileage to go in exploring the characters, the existing characters. Yeah, there won't be a sequel, for, not for me anyway, not unless I play someone else and change my look again. Uh, it would be lovely to be involved if there was a sequel of Bad Day, but uh, sadly I'm, I'm dead. If there was a sequel of Bad Day, I would definitely like to be involved. I had a really good time and I learnt a lot doing the first one.
Actually, no. Is it Ian? <laughs> like, would I work on the sequel? A dependent, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm sure, yeah. he would talk me into it at the moment. If there was a sequel, I'd love to be involved. Um, obviously, if he meets, meets my day rate, of course. If there was a sequel to Bad Day, I'd certainly consider being involved if the price was right. I'm there. I'm, I'm there. Benjamin Ratcliffe is there, but I'm in it this time, not just in it. In it. Uh, I could still definitely be alive. And, uh, and as, as I said, there's, there's a whole Abbey and Cummings backstory that we could work on. I know Donna would love to do that. Doing a sequel will be really interesting. It really depends on, on what the script's like and how it turns out. Yeah, there could be a sequel. We could bring everyone back. It could be like a prequel sequel. That, that, that'd be quite cool. <laughs>